Hello and welcome back. Today we're going over the uh, Culver Torque Analyzer. This particular model is the Culver K5 and it has a range of uh, 0.4 inch pounds to 44 inch pounds. And I will go over all the basic features and controls. Uh, the first of which is the power cord. This charges a uh, battery that is internal to the unit. If you do plan on using this without the power cord, i.e. taking it around your uh, production area, make sure it's fully charged the night before. Uh, that way you're assured to have uh, proper performance from the battery. The serial port, it is a standard serial port, and um, each time a rundown is performed on the analyzer, it will send a string of text data to a uh, computer of your choice uh, via, via the serial port and you can capture that with a program such as HyperTerminal. The next one is the external uh, cell. We do have rotary transducers that can be plugged into this unit and uh, you can perform inline testing with that particular setup. Next we'll go over the menu. Inside the menu, you press and hold the up key and the first thing will be the model parameters. This will, in this uh, particular set, will tell you uh, all the various uh, features about this particular model. Uh, nothing in this window is changeable. It is just uh, to tell you what firmware revision, uh, the mins and maxes uh, that this unit will take. You can select the language and in setup we have zero which if the numbers aren't at zero when you start you want to re-zero and we would press OK to zero and then press OK one more time and this will actually reset the uh, transducer to a zero point. You can click OK or escape to uh, go back to our setup window. If you go down to mode you'll see we have peak, um, peak plus and peak minus and then tracking. Peak plus is a maximum reading in the clockwise direction. Peak minus is your maximum reading in the counterclockwise direction. And track is uh, live data so you're uh, at all times reading whatever the transducer is actually seeing at that moment in time. And we can click OK or escape to get out of that. We can go into unit. Here we can select newton meters, newton centimeters, kilograms per centimeter, or inch pounds. Uh, we are currently on inch pounds. So you can uh, select OK for your particular and in auto reset. Auto reset will allow for a new number to appear each time you do a rundown. So you do not have to um, press a uh, OK or escape button to move on to the next reading. Uh, this will do it automatically for you each time. And it's currently set to on. The go no go, uh, we have a, a little um, a sound that will uh, allow you to know that you have gone above or below a threshold that you set. Uh, if you have a target of 10 inch pounds, for instance, uh, you can set an alarm at 9 and set an alarm at 11. And if you go above or below those numbers, uh, the alarm will be sounded. The date, I hope, is pretty explanatory. It uh, can be set by uh, clicking OK, and you'll see the first digits that pop up will be the uh, will be the day, and then the month, and then the year. I'm just going to click OK for all of these. And an important feature is the threshold. If you have your threshold very very low. Um, to the point of zero or point one, 
you're going to read numbers that are um, possibly erroneous because you can almost touch this and get 0.1 inch pounds and uh, those will interfere with your uh, actual readings. So I would suggest if your uh, threshold uh, be at least 0.4 inch pounds for this particular unit. Um, if you have a, uh, a K20, the low end of that unit is around 4 inch pounds. Uh, you don't want your threshold to be at 0.5 or, or lower um, because the unit's not supposed to be reading down there anyway and you will end up with erroneous numbers. Okay, back to uh, our original menu and we're going to memory. We can store up to uh, 500 uh, readings. So you can go out onto the production floor and do a set of rundowns and go back to your office and uh, download that memory. Um, if you press the uh, print uh, feature while it's connected to the serial port, it will uh, either print to a serially connected printer or to your computer if you have it set up to receive. We can also uh, look at the number of rundowns that are in the unit. It will actually give you an average. Okay, so you were in uh, memory and uh, we can uh, display the records. We press OK. You get to see um, the, the, the last one you just did will be the first one that comes up and you can actually scroll down through and you can view that data. back to memory. You can print the records like I said uh, once you if you have a hyper terminal or a printer that's serial connected you can uh, press OK and it will dump all that information for you. Uh, you can get an average of the uh, the numbers uh, that are stored in there and of course you can uh, reset the memory and it will ask you again if you want to reset the memory and click OK and now it's uh, deleted all the rundowns that you have done. The RS-232, uh, there's not much you can do to this one, it's just telling you the 9600 baud uh, and uh, all the other connection details. Um, you will not have the opportunity to change those. Calibration, this is something that will be done in a Cal Lab, so we're not going to be going over that. and you can select internal or external uh, transducers. The external of course is for the external cell that you would plug in here. All right. Most importantly to have set up and ready for your application is the joint simulator. The simulator comes as a uh, medium joint from the factory but you really want to remove the uh, retaining ring and all the uh, Belleville washers that are in here. These Belleville washers make up a spring and like I said from the factory they come set as a medium joint. Your specific application may require you to set those more to a hard joint or a much softer joint. In any case the proper use of this joint simulator is very important make sure you use it as a fastener and not just as a post to run the tool on. The proper way to use this is to have it backed out so it's ready to run in and then actually run the tool in. Now, if you leave it as it is all the way in the tool can never reach its actual intended torque because it's starting from a stalled position. Our electric tools are not meant for that.